And we're chatting to frontman, vocalist, guitarist, songwriter, extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> the list goes on. Steve Overland from FM. Now, um, we've I think we've explored in more detail previously, you know, the background to FM in the 1980s and how it, it almost happened and it didn't. And then, of course, you split up in the mid-1990s. Now, there's a track on the new album, Steve, called uh, Golden Days, which really reflects on former times. I mean, can I ask you in terms of your own career, what do you term to be golden days? You know, when you look back, I mean, I know you, you're looking forward as well. You know, even before the 1980s, David, when I, when I did um, I work with Simon Kirk and did the wildlife stuff, obviously I was a young man and uh, the two, two of my most influential bands were Free and Bad Company. I got to meet those guys and work on a record with them. So for me as a young man, that would be, that's always been a big memory for me that stuck in my mind but but fm had great times i mean we were as when we first got together and we did every tour we 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 were with bon jovi when they became the biggest band in the world we were on the slippery and wet tour when the album went to number one all over the world and you know we got to see a band that had been supporting rat in america suddenly become this mega mega band and we were actually touring with them it was like touring with the beatles they went from being a support band in America to be in this colossal band, you know. Mm. And we were with them at the time, and it was fantastic. You know, that's a great memory. And I did some fantastic tours, you know. Um, you know, Tina Turner, the Private Dancer Tour, the Arena Tours. I've, I've done, I'm still doing them. I, the tour with Journey and and Foreigner that we did in Europe. We, we the, To be honest, if you, I, I still love this as much. These are still golden days for me. <laughs> You know. oh, this is what I was hoping to hear, really. Yeah, yes. they still are, you know. And yeah. there's, there's no time in my career. If you can do this for a living, and this is what you do, and and they're all they're, it's all the times are great. And at the moment, FM are, are going from strength to strength. So there's still a lot more memories to be made, I think. And um, I'm, I just love doing this. So to me, I remember so many things fondly. You know, yes. and I could pick on certain shows, but, you know, I did the Royal Albert Hall two years ago. I'd never played it. That was a bucket list thing for me, you know. Mm. And um, so, you know, that's in this era of my career. Yes, you know? yes. Um, so they, they happen all the time, David, if you want the truth. It's, um, you know, those kind of golden moments in your life where you do something that you've always wanted to do are still happening for me, which um, which is fantastic. How would you choose the FM set list? And are you quite aware of mi mixing it up a bit at times? We are, yeah. I mean, and obviously we, we have to change the set for the territories we play too, David, because in Spain and Greece and all those places, they're obsessed with Indiscreet and Tough It Out. They love it. So we have to maybe stick a couple of extra songs off of those records in the set. But, I mean, to be honest, my main thing when we got the band to back together was I always said, if we're going to do it seriously again, we've got to be about what we are now, not about what we are in the past. Mm. Um, because it's important to me to keep that quality control and that level of making music now. That's what's important to me. You know, um, yes, we've got That Girl, Bad Luck, I Belong to the Night, Tough It Out. We've got all those songs, they're there. But it's about getting the new songs and making those songs as important to people as the old ones. That's what's important to me. Yes. Um, and I think the fans, you, listen, I'm, I'm going to have to play that girl in every set FM do for the rest of my life, you know, <laughs> but I can cope with that as long as I can mix it up with stuff that's new, that's about what we are now. And the sound of the band is obviously much different now because we've, you've got t lots more technology. I mean, FM still record albums in a recording studio. The drums are all live. They're not programmed. We still make records the same way as we made them in CBS studios back in the 1980s, early 80s. We go into a studio and make a record. And that's important to us. The same process with, I know that half the people that have our album will never see the sleeve. You know, mm. but to me, I still we meticulously spend ages picking the right artwork and getting the right pictures and getting the right credits in an album because... We still probably, I mean, we might be, you call us dinosaurs if you like, but to me, that's what makes rock music exciting. People wanted to own that product and the sleeve and every single detail 
has to be right. I'm not really into this playing just old songs and just banging out substandard records. I don't really see the point in being back together. Mm. Do that. No, no, that's, you know. that's fair comment. The core FM audience remains, I, I presume, those people who followed you back in the day. Uh, and you're saying also, as far as the younger crowd are concerned, it's, um, you are noticing or you have noticed that there's more younger people now coming to the gigs. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's been great, David. I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, they're, they're now in their 20s, but they grew up listening to FM through their parents. And the audience in Greece and Spain is much younger anyway. I don't know why that is, whether they still have rock clubs out there that play FM a lot. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know, but, you know, it's a much younger audience. And uh, I'm noticing, I'm getting people come up that are even younger than that, that have got FM T-shirts on. They say, oh, we grew up with your music, we love your music, or things. and it's just great because it means, you know, the, the old fans are always there, but it's nice to have a new generation that... That like our music and it kind of shows that it isn't that old-fashioned and dated it stands the test of time which is great durability really you know uh, totally yeah, yeah you know yeah. um so that's very reassuring that um you know we we got this new new influx of fans and a new generation of fans which just gives us more longevity you know we'll just keep going till we drop david yeah <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good